Hello learners, hope you are well. Uh, today we'll be looking at the river profiles, another section in geomorphology. Okay, now let's look at what we need to cover. Okay, uh, we'll have to cover river profiles with regards to the definitions. We'll get on my highlighter, the definitions the descriptions relating to the profiles, okay, and associated characteristics, all right. We'll also have to look at the cross profile, and that's your transverse, your longitudinal profile, and the relationship between the both profiles regarding the different courses. That means upper, middle, and lower course. So let's go to the information now. All right. And this is a longitudinal profile. And what we can clearly see, it is the side view of the profile. Okay. And we see here, uh, it's the steep at the top and gentle at the bottom, which makes it a concave slope or concave shape rather and of course we got the upper course the middle course and the lower course of the river which is right at the sea okay so in other words a longitudinal profile is the side view of a river showing the path from the source to the mouth. We also know it has a concave shape and it's steep at the source and gentle at the mouth. Okay, now the next thing we're going to look at here is your cross also known as your transverse profile. Now, if you look at this shape, you can clearly see, and I'm sorry, I'm going to go to that shape again, that it shows you from riverbank to riverbank. That is your cross or transverse profile. What we also can see is the height and the width is clearly shown in your cross profile. And if we have water in here, we could see the level of the water, how deep or how much it is with regarding to the level itself. Okay, so let's go over our summary. It sh shows us the cross view of a river from bank to bank. Okay, we can also view the width, the height, and the level of the water, if there's water in the area. Okay, now, next thing we're going to look at is two concepts, graded and ungraded profile. Now, if we look at the graded profile, we notice that it is a smooth concave shape profile, steep at the top and gentle at the bottom. The main word, it is smooth, meaning it has no obstructions like temporary base levels, like your lakes, rapids, nick points. You understand it's temporary, it's going to be eroded soon, nothing of that sort. So it is smooth. Then we come to an ungraded profile. An ungraded profile does have those irregularities or obstructions or temporary base levels. Can you see the rocks jutting out here, which probably will create a waterfall. Yeah, there's a lake. So it's not smooth. It wants to be smooth, right? Uh, when we do river grading in one of our lessons, we talk about that, 
where it actually wants to have a smooth profile, but this is your ungraded profile. Okay. Now let's do our little summary on this. Okay, a graded profile, smooth, concave, steep at the source, gentle at the mouth, has no obstructions or nick points. Ungraded profile has irregularities or we can say obstructions or temporary base levels and it is not smooth. Okay, have we got that? Now, let's look at the relationship. I'm going to show you two sources on this. Now, we know already that when we look at this, number one, we will see that in the different courses, our river or our cross profile changes each time. Okay? In the upper course, you will notice it is narrower and relatively deep according to the narrowness. Okay? And in this section, or in the middle course, it gets wider. And of course, in the lower course, it's wide, very wide. Okay? And what do we look at here is that in the upper course, it's dominated by vertical erosion. In the middle course, it's dominated by lateral erosion. And in this lower course, it's dominated by deposition, material getting deposited. Therefore, it becomes wide open before it reaches the sea. Okay? I'm going to show you another source here on the same thing. Can you see it? Upper course. In fact, the valley is more shaped like this than in the other diagram I gave you. Still got a bit of a V shape, but it's wider. Upper course, vertical erosion. All right. Middle course, vertical decreases and lateral erosion takes place. Therefore, it gets wider. All right. And in the last or lower course, the position is more than erosion, making it wide. Okay, so there's a relationship between the longitudinal and the cross profile. So to summarize, we know that the transverse profile changes as we go through the course of the river. In the upper course, We'll notice that it is quite narrow and comparatively deep based on the narrowness. So vertical erosion dominates. In the middle course, it's a wider channel, all right, uh, which is deeper than the one in the upper reaches and water flows faster. It has materials to slow it down sometimes, not so significant, but it slows it down. And then we notice that lateral erosion dominates, okay? And in the lower course, the channel is very wide and in place, in some places it's actually quite deep when the water flows quickest, okay? So in certain areas, don't take your chance and think in the lower course you can jump in. When the water flows fast in certain areas, it's relatively deep, but it's smooth-sided, okay? And deposition dominates, okay? So those are your main things that I've highlighted here, all right? Then, just to show you an overall view, all right? Your upper course, your middle course, and your lower course. I know you've done the features before this section, and you can see where features form in the upper course, rapids, waterfalls. In the middle course, the river starts to meander, and in the lower course, you have these huge meanders. You have oxbow lakes, 
uh, you have deltas, this deposited material forms your sand islands. And if these sand islands were along the course of the river down here, you would also have braided streams. You also have the floodplain in this area. Okay, so I hope it makes a little sense of differentiating between your uh, cross profile and your longitudinal profile. Uh, keep well, learners. All the best.